Once upon a time we were the proud owners of what probably was the ugliest green camper van in the world. Now this has changed. In this episode of our van conversion series we are showing how we have repainted the whole van using Raptor Liner. Painting is maybe not the right word, as Raptor Liner is not strictly paint, but it's bed liner. The Raptor Liner seems to be the best choice to get our ugly green Sprinter van to look much better. It cannot get any worse basically. This project is gonna be huge, and I am pretty much dreading it. After spending at least 6 months of contemplating and researching this project, I've bought our packages of Raptor Liner and we start prepping the van. First up is cleaning the van. Because of leakages we put tape on and around the strips of sealant along the roof of the van, but we never removed it. Now it's hardened and very hard to get off. We have spent hours and hours to remove the remnants of the adhesives. We tried several strategies and a wooden spatula proved the best way to scrape the tape residue off. After we got most off, we used W5 wet wipes to clean the last bits of glue. We had to do about 4 meters of cleaning on both sides of the van. When this cleaning process is done, we need to resolve the rust issues. We have several rusty spots all over the van. We've certainly seen much worse in some videos we've watched on YouTube, but still these spots need to be treated. We are sanding the rusty spots down to bare metal using a sander or by hand, and sometimes on the harder to reach spots we use a wire brush. We then use the greaser to get the spots and the area around it as clean as possible. Then we use Novorox Rust Stabilizer to create a protective layer. You can easily apply it with a brush. After the chemical reaction the metal turns blackish. And we had a lot of spots to treat. Some small, some large. Some in easy to reach places and some in the hardest places imaginable. So this takes time. A lot of time. But they all have to be treated, no excuses. Every single spot of rust must be neutralized. Here we will just show you a few of our challenges. One of the back doors has quite a big rusty spot. Actually the door seems to have been hit while being open. Because the edge was bent outward, we had to hammer it back in place. Unfortunately we don't have footage of that. Over the years it has become a hot spot of rust, that needs to be thoroughly taken care of. Lots of sanding, brushing and cleaning are needed on these doors. On the left door we applied some car body filler to get it somewhat in line with the other door. 
Mix the filler with the hardener or the plastic surface so moisture is not extracted by the surface you are mixing on. This impacts the drying times and the quality of the end result. The right door had a big nasty rust spot we had to thoroughly sand and clean before we can treat it with Novarox. This was one of the more time consuming anti-rust treatments we had to do because of all the awkward and uneven surfaces. A specific problem we had to deal with are the metal brackets that have been placed on the van by a previous owner. The rivets and the metal beneath the brackets are pretty rusty. These brackets have to come off and the rusty spots underneath need to be treated. We have had quite a bit of trouble removing the rivets using all sorts of tools. We drilled the center of the rivets out and then tried to cut them with a pincer. Some of the rivets were having none of that so it was quite a battle. Eventually we were able to remove all the brackets. The process of treating the rust is pretty much the same as the other spots. The rust under the brackets turn out to be severe. I used a screwdriver to get the old layers of paint off. After this a lot of sanding was required, really a lot. We are only showing you a fraction of the footage we have. We also used a few wire brushes. And then after this we again apply the Novarox rust treatment. We will be putting back the brackets after the Raptor liner is applied, since the holes are there anyway. It's harder to fill in the holes that it is to put the brackets, also treated with the liner, back on. If we would do this again, we wouldn't have used Novarox. We would have used a sprayable anti-rust primer as a first and final treatment. The manufacturer Upol has several in the product range that are compatible with the Raptor liner. There were also some dents in the bodywork of the van. We used car body fillers to hide the dents. First up is cleaning the surface, including the deepest bits of the dent itself and surrounding area. Then roughing up the old layer of paint by sanding and then cleaning and degreasing the surface again. To fill these dents we are using a one component car body filler. In hindsight we should have used the two component filler. The one component kind was a pain to apply and in the end it turned out to be of lower quality because it came loose while we were sending it. The basic technique is to cover the dents up, build the filler up a little past the regular surface around the dent and then work the edges in a radius around the area. The filler should cover a wider area than only the dented area. We then let the filler cure for a few hours. Five hours later. After it has hardened, sand it down and keep feeling with your fingertips if the surface is nice and smooth. There will almost always be little cavities in the filler. So usually you need to repeat this process after applying filler and sanding it down with a finer and finer sanding paper several times, until the surface is completely level and smooth. We also use the colored filling primer. We apply this over the sanded surface. 
So when you sand this down, the small cavities are made visible in the color of the primer. This helps identify the inconsistencies. After a few rounds of applying body filler and sanding it down, we apply the filler primer as a temporary protective layer until the Raptor liner will be applied. This is maybe a good time to mention we are not strictly a how-to channel, where you will find a definitive way on how you should do things. We merely show you how we did it, on the first try, usually without any experience. Of course we did our research, but please do your own research first and learn from our mistakes. We are also going to treat the back and front bumper with black Raptor liner. Now our front bumper is damaged and we have tried to repair it. To no avail, you can watch our separate video of how we tried and failed to fix our front bumper. See the link in the description. Treating all the rusty spots and repairing the biggest dents took us many hours over several days. This is a really time consuming job to do right. At this time in the whole process we hit a snag, at least I hit one. I suffered a mild heart attack just when we had finished about 80% of the rust spots on the van. This landed me in the hospital for several days and left me in a busy recovery schedule in which I needed to take it easy. So the whole project came to a halt for at least a few months. Luckily these were winter months so about 4 months later we picked the project back up. One eternity later. As a start of the project, the whole van needs to be cleaned with water and soap. We started washing the van by hand, especially to get the dirt out of all the cracks and hard to reach places. But we soon realized cleaning the whole van thoroughly would be a hell of a job. So after some contemplation we decided to go to a truck wash. For 25 euros we had the complete van cleaned in about 15 minutes like we would never have been able to do ourselves in a whole day. So that saved a lot of time. We will be working on the van at a special location where we can put the van inside a shed overnight to keep the van nice and dry during the whole process of cleaning, sanding, priming and applying the Raptor liner. We have 4 packages containing 4 liters of tintable Raptor liner in raw color 6003. So 16 liters in total. And we will be using black Raptor liner to paint all bumpers, trims, etc. Also the lowest metal parts under the trim pieces are going to be black. 6 liters of black Raptor liner should be enough. We've gotten a 2K epoxy anti-rust primer to treat the rusty spots. We have the adhesive promoting primer for the difficult to sand bits. We will be using the Raptor gun slash VN professional spray gun with an adjustable nozzle. But first, an inspection of the van. Especially the state of the many rusty spots scattered around the van. The van has been standing outside the last winter months, so the initial treatment of the rusty spots 4 months ago had pretty much lost its effectiveness. The complete van will need to be sanded down as a preparation for a coat of Raptor liner. The side trims need to come off first, the last bits of the cleaning obviously are to be done here. One of the hard to clean spots, even at a truck wash, are the spaces beneath the solar panels. These still have to be cleaned. All the rusty spots, again, need some special attention and are a lot of work. Some of them can be sanded down and directly be covered with the two component epoxy anti-rust primer. Some of the spots need more work using body filler and primer. 
there is still a lot of anti-rust work to be done. And there were also a few leftover projects popping up we forgot about. One of those were the two screws coming out of the roof, after we built our bulk head storage above the cabin. We secured a beam to the roof, accidentally using screws that were too long. Luckily these were stainless steel screws, so no rust. But we had to still grind them down. And then we send the area down. Clean the area and degrease it using slow drying degreaser. Then eventually we apply car body filler to get the roof looking half decent again. We apply a royal layer. After a few hours of curing, send it down using the orbital sander. This was one of those unexpected tasks that takes a lot of extra time. We are sending the van down mostly using the orbital sander and the mouse sander. Also there are quite a few spots that need to be done by hand. You can use a regular sandpaper for the manual bits or you can use a scuff pad. Always use a particle mask when sending for personal protection. Reptiline will not bond on a well smooth surface, so the goal is to rough up the old coating so that the Reptiliner can grab the rough metal surface. We used 80 to 180 grit sandpaper, but we mainly used 120 grit. You just have to take out the clear coat, so there's no need to be too aggressive. There is no need to sand the surface down to bare metal. Except when there's rust involved, of course. We have spent hours and hours sending every inch of the van to prepare for the Raptor liner and to treat the rust spots. As we have a massive van, we'll spare you all the footage, but show you just a quick compilation. What is also important is cleaning and degreasing after sanding the van. First the dust needs to be removed as much as possible. So first we tried a brush, which works ok, but still is pretty time consuming. We had a compressor standing around, so we tried blowing the dust off. This was a lot faster. Using compressed air was especially helpful to get all the dust out of the nooks and crannies quickly. Then the degreasing. For this we used the U-Pole slow drying degreaser S2002-5. We actually bought a 5 liter can so we have more than enough. First we used pieces of cloth to apply and wipe. But as the van is massive, we started using a regular spray gun to apply the degreaser and then wipe the van down. After every step of sanding, we degreased again. And now after all this cleaning and degreasing, it's time to treat the rusty spots. Where we sand it down to the bare metal with primer. As mentioned we used a 2K epoxy anti-rust primer to cover the bare metal as Raptor liner is not supposed to be applied to bare metal. 
it needs some anti-rust protection first. We mixed the two components in a measuring cup and then used a regular spray gun to apply the primer. We were actually amazed how much surface you can cover with just one cup of this primer. What also cost us a lot of time is that we found out there was a big rusty hole above the sliding door. When we started sending this bit down the metal simply gave way and a large hole appeared. This was an unexpected and unwelcome extra project to have to do. This cost us many hours. We filled the hole with glass fiber and body filler. As we were on a tight deadline we bought a regular car repair kit from a local hardware store. First we put in all the glass fiber sheets that came with the repair kit. After this we basically filled the hole completely with 2K body filler and hope for the best. Notice we mix the 2K body filler on a plastic surface to make sure moisture is not extracted from the filler by the surface you are mixing on. Two hours later. It took a lot of extra sanding and eventually we could treat the somewhat even surface with the 2K epoxy primer as the basic layer for applying the Raptor liner to. We let the primer cure overnight and then sanded the prime spots down with 120 grit sandpaper. And after this again decreasing the surface using the spray gun to apply the degreaser and cloth to wipe it down. Now with 5 days of sanding, priming and repairing rust spots and holes we are ready to apply the Raptor liner. But first we have to mask up every part of the van we don't want to have the color olive green, which is the windows, door handles, bumpers etc. We had bought a wide array of masking tape in several widths and several types of masking paper and plastics. So for every masking challenge we had more than enough supplies. Apart from the side trims we decided to remove as little parts as possible from the van. Our van is massive and we simply don't have the time to get this done in the time we have. So we had to mask everything quickly. The only parts we are removing beside the side trims were the window wipers. We left the hood open and put the wipers and all the wrap nuts on top of the motor under the masking paper. What may also be useful to mention is that among all the masking tape we've bought, one is quite expensive. This tape consists of two parts. One half of the masking tape is made of plastic, you put this under the rubber along the windows. The other sticky half you use to pull the rubber up just a little bit and secure it to the windows. So your paint can just get under the rubbers around the window. However it's far from ideal, because not all rubbers are flexible enough to get the plastic in between. So in the end we hardly used it, a bit of waste of money. This is actually a hell of a job that needs to be done right. This means applying the masking tape with laser-like precision along every edge. We wear a bit too hastily and a bit careless in some spots. And there you see in the end result just a tiny slither of the original color of the van. Something we still have to correct. So don't make this mistake. Be very careful and precise in applying the masking tape. Take your time. And having said this, on top of the van we were less careful and less precise. 
We had too little time to remove the solar panels and all the cables. So we decided to wrap everything on the roof and spray the Raptor liner in between as best as we could. It's not like we will see the roof often anyway. The difficult to sand spots we primed using the adhesive promoting primer. This comes in a regular spray can and it's pretty easy to apply. You can actually cover an impressive surface with one spray can. As said earlier the Raptor liner comes in two versions, black and tintable. We will be using the tintable Raptor liner to spray the van with raw color 6003. So the main color of the van will be olive green. We bought the tintable Raptor liner already pre-mixed, so we only had to add the hardener to the mix. If you have to mix yourself, you add a 100mm of toner to the tintable Raptor liner. Then you add the hardener and shake the bottle for at least 2 minutes. We will be using the Raptor Gun slash VN professional spray gun and a compressor set to 5 bars of pressure. And at this critical moment, a few seconds before we started applying the first Raptor liner, the battery ran out on the GoPro. We were on a tight deadline, so we couldn't wait around for the battery to charge. We had to make do with some photographs. We were working with just the two of us. Me spraying the first coat of Raptor liner at full speed and my friend Samuel was disposing of the empty bottles, adding hardener, mixing bottles and guiding my compressor hose. It was at least an hour into spraying the first coat when we got the first video footage. Yes, you are dealing with a real professional YouTube channel here. Not. We want as fine a finish as possible, so we set the adjustable nozzle to a minimal paint volume. Meaning we wound the nozzle all the way back into the spray gun, then gave it two full turns out and used a second ring to secure the nozzle in place. This setting in combination with the 5 bars of pressure gave us the texture we were looking for. Of course we tested a few other settings on some pieces of cardboard to check out the different textures. If you want to know more about using the spray gun and adjusting the nozzle, check out the video in the description with tips to using an adjustable nozzle spray gun. And for personal protection, always use respirator and protective latex or nitrile gloves when spraying Raptor liner. For me as a complete beginner, never having used a spray gun in my life, the key factor for choosing Raptor liner is the extreme ease of use. It's forgiving about a bad preparation, or a less than ideal preparation, a minimum risk of dripping, little overspray and no need for clear coat. Just have the spray gun at a distance of about 30 to 70 cm from the surface and spray using a sweeping motion. Most important is to keep the spray gun moving at all times so you don't get any excessive material buildup in one spot. So at the end of your sweep, swiftly move the other way or stop spraying. To get a little practice was also the reason I started on the roof to get the motion, speed and distance down of how to spray. And again, Raptor Liner is very forgiving when you make those rookie mistakes, and I have made plenty. We had the van cure overnight and the next day we touched up a few spots with a partial third layer. In hindsight this also turned out to be a mistake, a small one but still. The best thing would have been to remove the masking tape after about 60 minutes of curing as Raptor liner is touch dry in less than one hour. After a night of curing in some places the Raptor liner cracked when removing the masking tape. It was minimal, but still it could have been avoided. We applied at least two layers of the tintable Raptor liner. You need to leave at least about 60 minutes of curing time between coats.
And one quick pro tip. When you fix a bottle to the spray gun, turn the bottle until it's tight, but not too tight. And then turn the bottle back a half turn. So it will easily come loose when changing a bottle. Wrap the liner cures fast and having the bottle too tight makes the bottle very hard to remove from the spray gun when it's empty and partly cured. Now we have to mask the van again for the black color. But first we need to remove all the masking tape and paper needed to spray the green wrapped liner. A quick compilation. We will be using black wrapped liner to paint all the bumpers, trims, etc. Also the lowest metal parts of the van under the trim pieces are going to be black. Now we have to mask the van again for the black color. Especially around the wheels we have to mask the curves very carefully to get the result we want. The black layer of paint needs to perfectly match the curves and have minimal overlap with the green paint. We spent a lot of time getting these curves masked to perfection. The edge of the green and black will largely be hidden under the side trims. For the side trims and bumpers a different preparation was needed. Rigid and flexible plastic require a 120 to 180 grit sanding. We also used scotch Brite to rough up the surface of the trims and bumpers. After this you need to clean and degrease the plastic surfaces and spray them with an adhesive promoter like the Raptor Liner Adhesion Promoter Aerosol we used. From every angle I sprayed the trims and bumper using the adhesive promoter. Especially the front bumper was a bit of a challenge. Lots of nooks and crannies to hit. All the preparations of the side trims we did separate from the van. We put the trims on haphazardly thrown together frames using wooden trestles. Here we could rough up clean and degrease the trims separately from everything else. And in the same location we would eventually spray them using the black wrapped liner. And of course we also had to treat the back and front bumper on the van the same way as the trims. Lots of roughing up and degreasing. 
and eventually, of course, spraying the adhesive promoter. Just to be sure, we sprayed a few metal spots twice. You might have noticed it is pretty windy. To make sure we don't get any overspray because of the windy conditions we put together a wonderful construction. We could have put on an extra layer of masking tape but we decided this would be faster. In hindsight I'm not really sure, but at least it makes for some fun footage. And after all these preparations, we can now finally get spraying the Reptiliner again. We put two coats on the trims using the same settings of the adjustable nozzle of the spray gun and applied the same fine texture on these as on the van. So a light first coat, then a full second coat and after that a few touch up, but I wouldn't label this as a third coat actually. And we did the same on the metal parts of the van. Now with many hours of experience spray painting on the raw belt, spraying the metal parts on the van were at this point pretty easy. It's just a matter of adding the hardener to the bottle of Reptiliner and shake it for at least 2 minutes and keep spraying one bottle after the other. Again we have massive amounts of footage of spraying the van. A quick compilation of highlights will suffice to give you a general impression. Once the first layer of black Raptor liner was finished on the van, we switched to spraying all the side trims. This and cleaning the spray gun took about an hour, the recommended time to let the first coat cure. So after this we went right back to applying the second layer of black Raptor liner on the van. 
This made this job a lot more time efficient. And now something about the cleaning of the spray gun. Important is to clean the spray gun regularly. After every two bottles of Raptor liner we clean the spray gun. This means wiping the excess paint of the long metal inlet when you get it out of a used Raptor liner bottle. We use a separate bottle filled with acetone to clean the spray gun and nozzle. We just spray the acetone against a few leftover pieces of cardboard. Also use a cloth drenched in acetone to clean the inlet side of the spray gun. Raptor liner hardens fast and excess material build up around the nozzle is unavoidable. So if you don't clean the gun regularly it will easily clog up and severely mess up your paint job. Now with all Raptor liner applied, it's time to clean up and remove all the masking tape and paper from the van. Don't underestimate the time this takes. Don't assume you are done when the last spray of Raptor liner is done. It took us at least half a day to clean up, remove the masking tape and put the trims and the bumper back on. With all this done, it's time to let the fan cure for multiple days. The Raptor liner should cure for about 5 to 7 days or at least do not confront the Raptor liner with heavy objects or water before this time. We let the fan cure for about 48 hours at this location because the fan could be stored inside. Then we drove it home, it's hardly a 5 minute drive and we left it to cure some more days outside. All in all we spent 8 days from start to finish on this project. One day was cleaning the van. 4 days of preparing the van which means sanding, priming, repairing rust spots and the big hole above our sliding door and eventually masking up the van for the first color olive green. Then 3 days of applying the Raptor liner, removing the first masking and masking the van up again for the black Raptor liner. This was an enormous project, we are very proud of the results. I've never done this before, so this result is more than I expected it to be. Raptor liner is very forgiving for a first time user like myself. I hope this video gives you some inspiration, tips and tricks to use Raptor liner to transform your own camper van. Thanks for watching, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in the next one.